Welcome back everybody to the Ancient Technology Centre in Cranbourne and I'm joined by Andy who is going to be talking to us about these wonderful birds and their uses. So over to you Andy. I was originally trained using modern falconry techniques where you use a, a system called weight control where you reduce the bird's weight, take its food away and when the bird's hungry enough it'll do what you want. Um, I was always taught that birds don't bond with you, they don't want to be with you, they don't love you, you should never think that they do, they're only controlled through food and they're a tool. Then we bought a historical manuscript with our passion for history and we found that historically they did exactly the opposite. So instead of taking the food away from the bird, um, you're giving the bird as much food as it could possibly eat. You keep them on your glove, you, walk, you carry them around with you 24-7, you keep them in the banqueting hall, you keep them in the bedchamber, you even take them to church with you. Eventually the bird learns when he's on your glove you don't harm him, you protect him from external stimuli and also you give him as much food as he can possibly eat. That way the birds can be flown in a very very high condition without having to reduce their weight to make them fly. Um, you wouldn't really want to starve an athlete and expect him to perform in the Olympics and it was the same with history. Um, people in history wanted them to catch large geese, heron, crane, a hungry bird that's not feeling fit and strong would never even think of taking those. They would go for a smaller target which would look bad on the king or the falconer. So they, they used these techniques that were mainly came from the Muslim countries and were learnt during the crusading period and brought back during the crusades to Britain and used ever since. So obviously you're dressed as somebody that's pre-Tudor. Can you tell us about uh, the relationship between the bird and the age that you are dressed at? Um, well, yes, basically I'm dressed as in sort of Beaker period, um, late Neolithic, early Bronze Age period. Um, <clears throat> now, officially falconry started in the Roman period, according to the history books. Um, we've been on a crusade for the last 12 years to find research to prove otherwise. Um, and we think we found enough evidence to prove without a doubt that falconry was happening long before that in the UK. Um, the problem is, is the lack of equipment. It rots in the ground, so you don't really get to find any from that period. But there's been lots of grey finds of hawks, skulls and various equipment. Um, one of them was a wrist guard um, in a beaker burial and it had scratch marks on it. And it was dismissed as not being falconry related because people wear gloves. But still in the Middle East to this day, they still wear cuffs. Um, also, there was a bone toggle found that matches exactly what the Mongolian tribes people still use today to tether eagles to their belts. So this wrist guard, the toggle, and the bird's skull in the grave, it seemed, for us, is enough evidence to suggest that this was a, an, an beaker period falconer that was buried with his bird. So these were hunters then? Falcons, um, especially in the later period, were used for political purposes. They weren't really the best hunters to bring in food for the table. It was more of a sport and an art to show off your wealth and power. Um, whereas the goshawks and the occipiters, the sparrowhawk and the goshawk, they were used for hunting predominantly. Now this bird was a goshawk skull found in this beaker burial. So it, it stands to reason that he was using that bird to hunt um, and, and bring in food for the table. And because they, we came from the, they came from the Middle East at that time and brought farming with them, did they leave falconry behind that they were already practising out in the Middle East at that time and forget it to come to England? It doesn't seem likely. Well, great, I think I've made a friend here. <laughs> Thank well, you so is, much. This is Vercingetorix. He's named after the famous Gallic resistance leader. Oh, wow, a so fighter. We thought we'd give him a good name to try and give him lots of confidence. Oh, well, it's lovely to meet you. Thank and you very you much. As well. Nice to speak to you. Thank you very much for joining us, guys, and we'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.